Welcome back to the SharePoint Framework for Beginners. In this episode, we're going to build our web part and look at all the files and folders that make up our solution. If you haven't done already, click the subscribe button and the notification icon so that you don't miss out when we release another episode. Let's dive straight in. In this episode, we're going to look at the anatomy of a web part, basically all the folders and files that make up our solution. Now, since I recorded our last video on setting up a development environment, I've really enjoyed using the patterns and practices, that's PMP, SPFX, Yeoman Generator. So I'm going to use that today. So what we need to do to install it is bring up a command prompt. I'm going to run this as the administrator to make sure I've got access to everything. Now, as I go through the instructions, it tells us very clearly how to install it. So I'm going to do that now by typing in npm install. I'm going to put minus G, which is short for global, and then PMP generator SP. F X. Next, I'm going to go to my user folder. So in this case, I'm going to go into users. Now I'm going to go to my folder. And you'll see when you look through here that I've created a folder called source. That's what I use for my code. You can store this any way you like. I'm going to go into source. I'm going to create a folder by using make dear. I'm going to call this hello world. And then I'm going to go into that folder. Of course, you could have done all this using File Explorer or Finder on a Mac. So if I look at that, we have no files in there. So I'm going to run Yeoman. And I do that by typing yo. Notice it gives me some choices using the Microsoft default templates or the recommended PMP SPF X ones, or at least the ones recommended by me. So for this example, we're going to create a web part for SharePoint Online only. And we've got all these choices. In this case, I'm just going to do no framework SPFX. Later in the series, we'll be looking at things like React.js and Vue.js. I have lots of options given me here. I'm going to leave them all blank, but we can explore these in detail in a later episode. I'm choosing the most up-to-date TypeScript, and I'm going to select all of these so that we have them in our solution. I'm going to choose none for the pipeline. I'll ignore the test framework for now. And we're going to call the solution hello world. I'm going to use the current folder because I'm in my new directory. I'm going to accept all the defaults and then choose web part. I'm calling my web part hello world as well. And it's going to go off and create that for me. Note at this point, it won't have installed all the packages. We'll need npm for that. Next, we install our packages by typing npm install, or just i for short. Once it's installed all our packages, we type gulp serve to open up a debug browser so that we can see our web part. Now that we're in the workbench, simply click the plus, add our web part, and here it is. I'm going to break into that by doing control C and say yes to terminate the batch job. And then I want to open this in Visual Studio Code and I simply type code dot. The alternative would be to use Visual Studio Code and do open folder. So I can do code dot. This opens a solution in the context in which I'm working. If that doesn't work for you, I can start Visual Studio Code and I'm simply going to do File, Open Folder and I'm going to look on my drive, C, Users, Rob Pearmain 
and then I go to my source folder and there is my hello world web part. I'll click on that, select folder and that does the same as doing code dot in the context. So let's look at the anatomy of the SharePoint Framework web part project. So let's have a look at the main folders and the root level configuration files. So first of all, let's have a look at config. Config contains all our configuration files. Some of these may need modifying later to set maybe the icon for the web part and maybe the description, but for now we'll just leave it as is. Then we have the dist folder. This is a distribution folder. For example, TypeScript files compiled and bundled into JavaScript code. Again, we don't need to worry about this. It's generated by the system. The lib folder. The lib folder contains files used at compile time. We don't modify these ourselves. All the files we modify are found in the source folder, and we'll look at that in a moment. First, though, let's have a look at the node modules. This contains all the dependencies, literally tens of thousands of files and thousands of folders. It does look ugly, and downloading all these files will take a while when you're running the Yeoman SharePoint generator, as you saw when we did npm install, but they are required for the development environment to work. This is our main folder, the source folder. It contains all the important source code required to build our web part. The temp folder, well that's temporary files used by the SharePoint framework development environment. We don't need to worry about that. So let's look at some of the files in our solution. The editor config. So when you use Visual Studio Code, this configuration file defines how the editor works in this folder. It contains information such as how to indent as a tab or a space, or how to make your file look, for example, trim trailing white spaces, and we have uh, things like the indent size. Another file we want to look at here is git ignore. Git ignore will say which files not to store in source control. Yo, rc.json, this tells us the configuration for Yeoman when it was used building this project. For example, it shows that we used the PMP generator. Gulp file, or if you remember from the last lesson, Gulp are the scripts that are run. This is a Gulp configuration file. Basically, it's executed using Node.js when we do Gulp commands such as Gulp serve or Gulp build. Finally, we have package.json, and this tells us all the different versions of the packages that are used by our solution and the versions used by Node Package Manager or NPM. README, this is used when we're using it with source control. It's the documentation file for Git repositories. We need to modify this every time we commit it to source control. And finally, although we're using JavaScript, we use TypeScript over the top of it to make it more strict. And this is the configuration file. We modify this to change the way that TypeScript is compiled. This is the basic structure of a web part project created by the Yeoman SharePoint generator. We're going to mainly spend our life within the source folder, SRC. First of all, go into your source folder and open hello world web part.ts. Let's have a look at this function, render. This function shows one way of building web part content. So instead of using a JavaScript framework or library such as Angular, React, Vue, or Knockout, we're simply assigning the HTML value inside the inner HTML property of our web parts DOM element or document object model. Essentially, what we're doing here is we're just building HTML to be written out. Now, you'll see there's a special character used there. That special character, the backtick operator, is to start and end the string. And the HTML can now be divided up into multiple lines with ease. We have simple templating to use with our placeholders. In the code, it puts the class names in place 
as well as writing a description web part property value into the page. Notice the escape function. This is, comes from a Lodash library and it ensures that any JavaScript injected by this property is sanitized or not executed on the page. Now as you scroll down, you'll see a quick preview of some properties. And these are the web part properties that will appear when you go to edit your web part. And we're going to look in detail on that in later in the series. You also have locales, which are found here. Now the locales are for using different languages for our properties, but it actually explains the titles used. When you are building multilingual web parts, we use this method to declare all the user interface language specific interviews and create JavaScript files to enable localization. For instance, I could have an fi-fi.js file to support Finnish language. The one that comes by default is the enus, obviously for US English. Another file that we want to edit is the manifest file. This file contains information about our Hello World web part that SharePoint needs to run it. You can see identifying information as well as information that is used in the user interface when the web part is added to the page. There is also the title and description information as well as the default value for our description. Next, let's look at the SCSS file. So SAS allows you to have variables and code in your style sheets and the SharePoint framework utilizes SAS CSS, the preprocessor that allows us to use advanced CSS syntax. Next, let's look at package.json in the root. This information is used by the node package manager and has lots of information about dependencies. So as promised in the last video, we're going to modify the code in our web part. So we need to go to the source folder and choose our hello web part.ts. Then I want to copy this bit of code that's writing out my description. And I do that by highlighting it and simply copying it. Then I want to remove everything between this outer div. I'm going to put a H1 for header element and a closing element and then paste in my code. Now, when I run this, instead of this web part we saw at the beginning, I'm going to allow it to rebuild. And there are our changes. Next time we're going to look at building the web part, but this time using the React framework. If you haven't done already, click the subscribe button and the notification icon. We'll see you next time.